In this video, we're going to look at this sum that involves reciprocals of Fibonacci numbers and the inverse tangent function. And we're going to get a pretty surprising result. So let's just recall how the Fibonacci numbers are defined. So we've got the zero Fibonacci number is zero, the first is one, and then we have this two-step recursion. So Fn equals Fn minus one plus Fn minus two, and that's for all n bigger than or equal to two. And so our goal is this sum from n equals one to infinity of the inverse tangent of one over the odd Fibonacci number, so F sub two n plus one. So notice, since we start at one, that's gonna be one over F three, one over F five, and so on and so forth. So we're gonna make use of two lemmas to prove this. One is called Cassini's identity, and it says that if you square a Fibonacci number and subtract the product of the two on I either side of that square, you get minus one to the n minus one. And then the second one uh, is going to be this fact that if you take the arctan of one over f sub two n plus one, you can split it into the arctan of one over f sub two n plus two minus the arctan of one over f sub two n. So we're gonna prove those two lemmas and then deriving this sum will be pretty simple. Okay, so let's do the proof of lemma one first. Okay, so we're gonna start the proof of this first lemma by, by proving the following claim. So we're gonna claim that if you take the following two by two matrix, one, 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 zero, read column wise, and raise it to the nth power, you'll get this matrix of Fibonacci numbers given as follows. So Fn plus one, Fn, Fn, and Fn minus one. So we'll do the proof of this claim by induction. And so let's see what our base case would be. Notice n equals zero doesn't make so much sense for a base case because then we would have to take the negative first Fibonacci number. And yes, you can extend the Fibonacci numbers um, to negatives, but that's not what we're gonna do here. So that means our base case, let's take n equals one. And now notice the right-hand side in that case will become F2, F1, F1, F0, but now notice that's exactly the matrix 1, 1, 1, 0 to the first power. So in other words, this formula is true for the base case for n equals 1. Now let's make our induction hypothesis. So let's suppose this is true for n equals k. In other words, if we raise this to the kth power, we get f sub k plus one, fk, fk, and fk minus one. And now, let's see what we need to do from there. So we need to make sure it's true for the k plus first power. So we'll do one, 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 zero to the k plus first power. So that's gonna be one, 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 zero times one, 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 zero to the kth power. But then our induction hypothesis allows us to rewrite this using Fibonacci numbers. So that's going to be 1, 1, 1, 0 times F sub K plus 1, F sub K, F sub K, F sub K minus 1. Okay, good. But now let's just do a plain old um, matrix multiplication here, and that's gonna give us F K plus one plus F K in the upper left entry. That's gonna give us F K plus F K minus one in the upper right entry. That's gonna give us F K plus one in the lower left entry. And then finally, that's gonna give us F K in the lower right entry. Okay, but now notice by our defining recursion on the Fibonacci numbers, this guy is F sub K plus two, this guy is F sub K plus one, so we can rewrite this whole matrix as F K plus two, F K plus two, sorry, F K plus um, one goes here, fk plus one goes here, and then fk goes here, which means this statement is true for the k plus first term, and we have proven this claim by an induction. Okay, so now what I'll do next is clean up the board, and then we'll show how this claim implies Cassini's identity. 
Okay, so we just got done proving this claim. Now we're gonna see how that implies this formula down here, which is called Cassini's identity. So it's as simple as just taking the determinant of both sides of this equation. So notice the determinant of the left-hand side of this equation is equal to the determinant of this matrix to the nth power. So, um, and that's just from uh, linear algebra. So in other words, it's going to be minus one to the nth power because notice the determinant of this matrix is uh, one times zero minus one times one. In other words, it's minus one. Um, but then this matrix is raised to the nth power, so we get minus one to the n. And now let's notice that over here, the determinant of this matrix is fn plus one times fn minus one minus fn squared. So now that is exactly this identity when you change the sign on both sides. Okay, good. So now we've established Cassini's identity. Now we can get to proving the next lemma. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and we'll get to it. Okay, so now we're ready to do the proof of this second lemma. So what I'll do is I'll start with the right-hand side of this equation. I'll take the tangent of it and show that that equals the inside of the inverse tangent of the left-hand side of these, this equation. And that will show that this equation is indeed true. So in other words, I'm going to set theta equal to um, the arctan of 1 over F2n minus the arctan of 1 over F2n plus 2. And then our goal is to calculate the tangent of theta and show that that equals 1 over F2n plus 1. So that's our goal here. And that will show that this equation is true. Okay, good. So now what I'm going to use is the angle difference formula for tangent. So let's recall that real quick. So let's recall that the tangent of A minus B equals this quotient tan A minus tan B over 1 plus tan A times tan B. So that's what we'll use, and we'll use it where um, A is equal to this term, and then B is equal to this term. Okay, good. So now if we take the tangent of theta, notice the tangent and the inverse tangent will cancel, and so that's going to give us 1 over F2n minus 1 over F2n plus 2 over 1 plus this product. So 1 over F2n, and then F2n plus 2. Okay, great. So the next thing that we're going to do is take this quotient, multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. And so we'll multiply by F2n, F2n plus 2, upstairs and downstairs. Okay, good. So let's see what that gives us. So in the numerator, that's going to give us F2n plus 2 minus F2n. And then in the denominator, that's going to give us F2n times F2n plus 2 and then plus 1. And now we can notice two things. First of all, we can notice that this numerator is exactly equal to F2n plus 1 because of the defining Fibonacci recursion. So these two are equal, and you can see that because if you add f sub 2n to both sides, you get exactly this recursion. So this is just a different version of that recursion. And then we can also notice that the denominator of this, using Cassini's identity, is equal to f sub 2n plus 1 squared, which means this cancels down to exactly what we want it to, 1 over F2n plus 1. So now if we take the inverse tangent of both sides, we'll get theta equals the arc tangent of that. So let's write that down. So taking the inverse tangent of both sides, we'll get theta, which is our expression, equals arc tan of 1 over F2n plus 1, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so that's the end of the proof of this second lemma. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we're ready to finish the whole thing off. 
Okay, so we've proven our two limits as tools and now we're ready to evaluate this sum. So we're gonna do this by taking the limit of partial sums. So in other words, we're gonna take the limit as k goes to infinity as a sum from n equals one to k of arctan of one over f sub two n plus one. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll use this second limit down here to split that one over f uh, two n plus one inverse tangent term into two. So notice that's gonna give us the limit as k approaches infinity of the sum n equals 1 to k of, now we have the arctan of 1 over f 2n um, minus the arctan of 1 over f 2n plus 2. Okay, great. Now the next thing we're going to do is split this into two sums. So that's going to give us the limit as k approaches infinity of, now we have the sum n equals 1 to k of arc tan of 1 over f 2n minus the sum n equals 1 to k of arc tan of 1 over f 2n plus 2. Okay, good. So the next thing that we're going to do is take the first term out of this first sum, the last term out of the last sum. So let's see what that gives us. So we have the limit as k goes to infinity of, so we'll have arctan of 1 over f2, so that's the very first term, plus the sum n equals 2 to k of arctan of 1 over f2n, okay? Good. Minus the sum n equals 1 to k minus 1 of arctan of 1 over f2n plus 2. And then minus the last term being taken out, which is going to be the arctan of 1 over f2k plus 2. Okay. Great. Now from here we can re-index. So we can either re-index this one or we can re-index that one. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. So maybe we'll re-index this one. So let's send n to n plus 1. And notice that's going to change this to start at 1 and end at k minus 1. And that's going to change this to be 2n plus 2. Okay, but the magic is that now this sum and this sum cancel. Great, and that leaves us with the following expression. So now we have the limit as k goes to infinity of arctan of, but we know f sub 2 is 1, so we have arctan of 1 minus arctan of 1 over f sub 2k plus 2. Okay, now we're almost done. Now as k goes to infinity, the inside of this inverse tangent goes to 0, but we know the inverse tangent of 0 is 0, so all of this cancels down to 0, and we're left with just the inverse tangent of 1, which is equal to pi over 4. And that's our final answer.